Hey everyone, it is Brian here at Red Leaf. It is the beginning of July and the garden is bursting with life. Everything looks amazing and I want to give you guys a tour and show you how everything's doing. Let's get into it. Wow. Just wow. I can't help but feel a sense of wonder every time I look at the garden. You know, so much of this was created by our own hand, but at the end of the day, this is all Mother Nature's doing. And I just can't help but feel so grateful, so grateful to her and this beautiful planet that we live on. And just the fact that we're even able to do something like this and live this wonderful life. <sighs> Guess we'll start on this side of the garden over here. Oop, always gotta pass and brush through the artemisia. Feels nice though. Here we have our one of our herb beds here, and we have some beautiful silver-leafed lavender and this really cute uh hit coat lavender budding. So pretty, alongside this beautiful rosemary. I love how their textures are so similar and they just play off of each other. Really, really pretty. I also have some cilantro here that is bolting and going to seed, excited to collect these seeds and hopefully have an abundance to plant next year. Oh boy, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had the massive clary sage here. <laughs> um, it was finally time to cut it back and oh, surprisingly enough, it's already starting to grow back. Hmm, interesting. We do have a lot of time left. I wonder if it'll bloom again time will tell hopefully so because it looks tragic here <laughs> over here we have the cabbage patch and it's looking wonderful i actually i literally just harvested one of probably the biggest viola chao di verona cabbages i have to show you guys that it looks incredible and so does everything else it's all growing in so lovely we have had um, a bit of a battle with cabbage worm, but it hasn't been too bad actually. I've been spraying um, Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacteria that targets cabbage worm directly. It doesn't hurt anything else. It's not a chemical-based pesticide, and it's the only thing I spray in the garden. Oh, here's some dill going to seed. Gonna collect that. I was a little surprised by this dill. I think this is an elephant dill. Um, its growth habit is interesting. The dill I grew last year was very bushy, but this is a really long stalk. Um, but it looks really cool next to the cabbage, actually. Here's a red cabbage that looks ready to harvest. Oh yeah, that head is firm. I need to harvest this one too. Oh my god, so much cabbage. What am I gonna do? Um, but a good sign that it's ready to harvest is that the head will feel firm. If it feels soft still, um, you probably need to leave it for a little longer to mature. Oh boy, over here we have the pepper and okra bed and it's growing in so beautifully. Here I have a purple variety of pepper. Oh, here we go. This is called a um, Murasaki purple pepper. Nice and mild in flavor. Um, I actually harvested some, harvested some earlier, but I think I need to harvest more. The more you harvest the peppers, the more they'll produce. Here we have a beautiful nasturtium in the center flowering. If y'all don't know, nasturtium flowers are edible. They're really spicy and tasty. Great for salads. Here's another purple pepper variety. This one's called a Buena Mulata. I haven't tried this one yet, so I'm, I'm curious as, to see what the flavor's like, but it's so pretty. I love the color. Ooh! Over here's another purple. Oh, uh, no, actually not purple. <laughs> Um, this is an Edgevarsky uh, pepper, which gets really bright red when it's ready. Um, a little bit more on the heat side of peppers, which is fine, but it's really delicious roasted as well. So I think it should be good for sauces. And over here, we finally have some shishito peppers growing in on this side. Very excited about this. I love shishito peppers, love roasting them too. In the center, 
the okra has really started to take off. Um, I'm curious to see how this bed balances itself out because there's a lot going on in here, which is great. I, I love the idea of like a food forest and everything just getting so big and lush. Um, but oh, I have some okras forming actually, nice. Here's one. Fun fact, uh, is any, are any of these in flower? No. Fun fact, okra is actually in the same family as hibiscus. So when they bloom, check out their flowers. They look really similar to hibiscus, super beautiful. I believe this is a bowling red okra. Let's see, here's a, a jing orange, I believe. It just finally flowers, so it should start producing its first, um, first batch. But I'm curious to see what those look like. Um, this is an Akinawa pink. You know what? Is it? They all kind of look the same. But I swore I, I, I... Huh. I'm gonna have to see how these fruit develop because they look kind of the same. Interesting. Well, the leaves look different actually on this one. This is the Akinawa pink, I believe. And then over here I have a bowling red variety okra. So it's gonna be a really vibrant variety of okra. Really excited to see how that turns out. Chloe, don't be eating the grass, baby. How you doing, sweetheart? How you doing? You're so cute. I love you. You ate cat poop, though, so you smell bad. <laughs> oh, guys, over here, the eggplant. Look how big it's gotten. It's huge. And I'm finally getting my first eggplant. So excited. I believe this is... What variety is this? Do I have it on the label? Hmm. I don't know if it's the Malaysian dark red. Hmm. I don't remember what variety it is. Ah, so many things, so many things. It's fine. Um, I'll probably leave it in the description below, but a really beautiful variety of eggplant. A smaller variety, they don't get too big. Although they have been getting a little eaten up by Japanese beetle. God, I just can't get a break. There's always something, huh? Which is fine. It's not completely ravaging the plant, but Every time I see them, I just flick them off. Oh man, really quick, I want to show you over here. Uh, we just edged and cleaned up this walkway here and it looks so beautiful. The perennial bed, this new perennial bed is really coming together and looking gorgeous. We've been working really hard on it and everything seems to be establishing well. Looking stunning. Oh my goodness, and I love this view of the garden. Just wow. So much color and diversity in the garden. I really think, a lot, of, a lot of people always ask like, how do you control pests? How do you control pests? I have issues with pests. And I really think the key to our success in the garden is planting a beautiful and vast diversity of plants, you know? The more diverse the plant life is in the garden, the more diverse the insect life will be in the garden. You'll attract very specific insects that like very specific plants. And that diversity of insects in the garden kind of puts all of them at competition with one another because there's so much going on that they'll all essentially balance each other out because they won't give each other the room to thrive, if that makes sense. I studied a lot about permaculture before starting the garden this year and, you know, developing a really diverse and healthy ecosystem is a really big part of a permaculture garden and I absolutely love it. You know, you're really helping the native wildlife, you're helping um, giving shelter and habitat to the native wildlife and in turn you're getting a beautiful luscious garden. But don't get me wrong, there are still some pests, but not anything that's so unmanageable. Um, but again, there's so much that I don't really feel faced by much of it. Ooh, over here, this is a very experimental bed, very new. I just started it this year. Um, the chickens got over here and ravaged it a bit, goodness. Look away for one second and they always just scratch something, Jesus. But yeah, um, very new bed, <laughs> very experimental. Curious to see how things do over here. I planted some things over here with the um, intention that there would be more light coming in here, but I didn't expect this tree to actually grow out so much. 
So it ended up being a lot shadier than I anticipated, so some things are going to have to be moved for next year. But for now, I'm just going to let it do what it's going to do. Everything still looks pretty good, though. Lots of beautiful plants over here. Um, oof, this is a, a gold leaf elderberry that just looks so gorgeous. But I think next year I want to plant it somewhere where it gets a lot more sun. Here's some more elderberries, and they're looking a little scraggly. They could probably use more sun, too. So those will have to be moved. Chloe, what are you doing up in there? Get, shoot, shoot. Don't be stepping up on my ferns. Here I have some ferns and this is a native, um, what is it called? Oh goodness, I forget. But it's also a native variety and these appreciate the shade. So I think they're doing well here. Um, oh, here is a native bee balm that flowered, which is great. But it, it does feel very lanky, and I think that's because, again, they're not getting that much sun over here, and they want full sun. And then I have this plum tree that actually didn't produce any plums for me this year. Um, I looked it up, and I swore it was a, a self-fertile variety, but I'm not too sure now. I think it might need another partner. Um, but we'll see. I'll probably have to move that, that too. <laughs> very experimental. <laughs> Um, oh, but the arch is coming in super lovely. This other arch entryway that we have in the garden. We have native clematis growing up it, and it's really taking hold. It is its first year here, so I don't think it's going to flower, but it is taking over. Alongside a native wisteria as well. They get these beautiful purple bulbs of flowers. Um, it already flowered for us this year, which was surprising in itself. Um, but now I'm just focused on training it up this, this arch so that it can really make this its home. Really curious to see how it does. It is the first year. It is still working on getting established, but I think next year it's just going to explode with growth. Um, oh, and here's some native milkweed. Still hasn't flowered for us. Just planted it this year. Um, maybe could use some more sun as well, honestly. But who knows? That This is the part that gets the most sun because it's not completely covered under this tree so hopefully it does well i mean they're growing they're looking good fingers crossed i'm gonna walk up the archway here i'm trying to figure out what to do here actually i want this to be like a cute step but the inspiration for it hasn't necessarily come yet so right now it's just an earthy step <laughs> oh boy i love this and this pathway here look at that what a moment. As you can see, it's getting filled in by <laughs> the pumpkin here. It's really taken over. But it's looking gorgeous. Oh my gosh, over here. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but this is, or in the last video I mentioned it. Here's where I'm practicing a super guild, another permaculture practice where you plant a community of plants together and they should essentially help one another grow much more effectively um, through specific connections that each plant has with one another. Um, for example, I have a line of comfrey here and if you cut that back, it acts as a green mulch. You just lay it on top and it's so nutritious for the soil. It's a very nutrient rich plant. Here's some native hyssop, which acts as an insectary and attracts all the beautiful pollinators. Here is a milkweed as well I believe this is a hybrid variety though, but it attracts a lot of beautiful um, insects as well, lots of pollinators. Um, these I, I will probably cut back and those will also act as a mulch. But what, what I've been doing with the guild is really interplanting like annuals and flowers and stuff to really make it my own. But there's a lot going on in here. In the far back, in the center of the bed actually, we have a mulberry tree. And it is its first year. I don't believe it's producing any fruit just yet, but really excited for those berries. Oh gosh, look at that color. Oh my gosh, the yellow of the yarrow, the orange of the milkweed, the, the little splash of white back there from a, a cleome that I've planted, and the, the light pastel purple of the hyssop. Ah, so beautiful. Uh, it's come along so nicely. I love this area, love this bed. 
Oh, and over here I have, oh my gosh, look at the difference. I planted this elderberry in full sun and look at how much bigger it's gotten than the ones that were in the shade there. A world of a difference. They definitely want that full sun. Hopefully it flowers and produces berries this year. That'd be nice. Oh boy. <laughs> Over here I have this blue Jaradale pumpkin um, that has just whew, exploded, y'all. It is huge. Look at it. Oh, but it looks so pretty. Oh, I love it so much. My vision for this area was to, you know, play on that three sisters planting method. Um, which is where you plant corn, beans, and squash together, and they work together in this beautiful symbiotic relationship to help each other grow. Um, but I miscalculated this corn actually being a dwarf variety, so the pole beans that I planted here were not going to work, um, and the pumpkin just kind of exploded and took over, which is fine because they look beautiful together. And funny enough, this is actually a blue variety of corn that actually looks just about ready. It's a Montana coup de corn. Ah. Oh my gosh, guys, we're gonna have some really fun blue produce this year. So excited, so excited. Oh boy. <laughs> here, oh, oh gosh, I just hit this, <laughs> ran into my zucchini. Um, here is, sorry, here in the center area we have these beans growing up this teepee that i built myself out of bamboo and it is a white and red cranberry bean and i'm a little i'm, a, I'm questioning it a little bit just because i would have expected it to flower by now but i haven't seen many flowers or much beans i tried cutting it back because it's casting so many runners and so many vines to like maybe force it to flower but nothing yet and i planted the potatoes in the center here and they don't seem to be doing well at all probably because you know it's completely shaded much more shaded than i thought it was going to be i did not expect the beans to get so big Whew. but a lesson learned this area is very temporary as well i just wanted to play and experiment with something here my goal here actually is to continue the path here and next year there will actually be a greenhouse right here oh my gosh can you see it now it's gonna be so beautiful and then on the set on the sides i'm gonna have beds to plant produce uh, to plant crop vegetables flowers whatever my heart desires very excited over here i have more corn and this is a tall variety this is the peaches and cream so i was definitely able to play out the the three sister planting method over here, um, which I just want to mention is a very traditional Native American practice of planting vegetables. Um, we have so much to learn from our Native American ancestors and, and brethren and the people who were really on this land before colonization. And I'm honored to even be able to use their practices in my garden because, I mean, especially for this one, it takes quite a bit of room and I'm just really grateful for their wisdom. Um, but now that, you know, I have this really large corn, I planted the pole beans and they're starting to climb up. Very beautiful to see. And traditionally, you know, you want to plant squash, but I actually went ahead and planted watermelon because it is in the same family as squash. They are related and it has a very similar growth habit. So, you know, the long leaves will sprawl out the base through the base of the corn and shade the soil protecting the ecosystem within the soil um, and it also gives the watermelon a safe place to grow <laughs> y'all look my first watermelon this is a moon and stars variety and it's already gotten so big i swore this pollinated just a few days ago Whew. very very excited to see how that does over here is another um way of doing the three sisters planting method you know here i did long and wide rows but here i actually planted the corn Ooh, gotta step in in mounds as you can see there and i'm seeing how that's gonna do this is an atomic orange variety um curious to see how it does i'm surprised it's actually started to tassel already because i planted it a few weeks after this corn here um hopefully they don't cross pollinate i hope not but we gonna see y'all. <laughs> and then on the very 
edges of this bed, I have a lot of um, flowers, like this cosmos that has yet to bloom for me, but it's getting massive. It should bloom soon. Some zinnias here. Oh my gosh, it looks so gorgeous. And some lupins as well. And I'm surprised because I started these, actually all these were from seed, y'all. Crazy enough. I was surprised that the lupin started flowering for me this year because I feel like I planted them considerably late for lupins. They like being planted in the very early spring, but they su do seem to be doing well. These are perennial. So, you know, I'm not expecting too much of them this year. I'm, I'm very grateful they did flower. But um, what I really want them to do is establish a solid root system so that they'll keep coming back year after year. It does get a little shadier on this side of the bed, which they should like. They like it a little cooler, so. Fingers crossed. Oh boy, oh wait, actually. <laughs> Look at the sunflowers, y'all, <laughs> while we're here. They're so tall, oh! Oh my gosh, hold up. Hold up. Are y'all seeing this? This is crazy. This is a Mongolian sunflower and it's supposed to be one of the biggest varieties of sunflower. And I, oh, y'all, this has to be at least 16 feet tall. Oh, and that one just keep, keeps going. So cool, I'm so excited, and they're finally flowering. Oh, gardening is so cool. <laughs> I love it. Side note, oh, while we're over here, y'all, look at the, <laughs> I'm trying to grab it. Look at that cabbage. Oh, I don't even know if it's in frame. goodness it is so beautiful this is the viola chao di verona cabbage and it is just gorgeous oh look at that color just so so beautiful so happy can't wait to eat it okay back to it here i have some strawberries growing in a pot in pots and hanging pots and hanging baskets they're not doing as hot as I, was, as I was hoping they do. They haven't even produced any flowers yet. I'm sure they're not the happiest in here. So we'll have to revisit that idea. Here I have some blueberries growing. Ooh, this is a, a goji berry. And I believe I saw a flower. So we're gonna see what, what happens here. More blueberries. They don't seem to be doing that well. They did produce berries for me this year, um, but just a few. I think they need much more acidic soil. Ooh, over here um, I had garlic, but we harvested it all and we got so much beautiful abundant garlic, but I've replaced it with sweet potato. And last year I planted a ridiculous amount of sweet potato in this bed. It did not need nearly that much sweet potato. So instead I planted fewer and more spaced out. So hopefully they get much bigger. Um, they were rescues. I saved them from a friend who had them out for a while and they got a little ravaged. Um, but I have a strong feeling they'll make a good comeback. Um, sweet potatoes are sturdy little plants. Very sturdy little plants. Oh, wait, before we go over there, I want to show you guys over here. Oh, oh my goodness. Velvet Queen sunflowers are starting to bloom and they're looking stunning. Oh, I have this little container here, but one of the uh, mammoth sunflowers bloomed and that's getting really big. Ooh. Huge, huge. Oh. Just looking gorgeous. And it looks, it's great. Oh, got drama. Oh, there's Jerry. Hey, Jer. Welcome home, boo. Um, but really love the sunflowers here, especially because they helped cast shade into the chicken run with the chickens. Hi ladies, hi babes. And it gives them much needed shade, especially during that crazy uh, summer heat we've been getting. Now 
Okay, back to it. <gasps> oh, side note. I forgot, oh my God, I planted another eggplant over here and, oh, this is the Malaysian dark red. So what's the other one? Oh, look at this eggplant, beautiful color. But I was a little concerned about this one. I feel like it's been growing really slow compared to the other ones. But honestly, I'm just so happy to see that it hasn't been ravaged by flea beetle like last year. I will attribute it to, you know, one being planted next to this chamomile, which has taken over the bed. Maybe that's what's slowing it down. It's a really big chamomile. But you know, it's still growing, which is great. But I think having it also in this, you know, raised container really helps too. Having it off the ground, because those flea beetles are groundhoppers. Really neat. Ooh, here we have the loofah gourds growing on the beautiful trellises here. Let me get on the other side of it. It has started putting out a lot of male flowers, but no female flowers just yet. But I'm hopeful, there's still plenty of time. Really, whenever like, you know, a, a cucumber or um, a zucchini pollinate or squash, I feel like they grow so fast, so I'm not worried that I'm gonna be running short on time here. I feel like once a female flower gets pollinated, it'll just shoot out. Something really interesting about the loofah gourd though is the flower, the male flower. It puts out like a head full of flowers rather than just an individual flower. That's really interesting. Oh, all the little ants are like, ah! <laughs> Over here we have the green tomatillo, which has just bursted. And I mean bursted with life. We have tons of fruit popping up. Oh, this one's almost ready. Oh my God, this one actually bursted. This one is ready. <gasps> oh my God. I need to harvest you, baby. I'm sorry. I'm coming for you, my sweet tomatillo. Ooh, over here, we have a green uh, bush squat, uh, zucchini that I've planted and some of the male flowers are coming out, which is a good sign. It is happy. So the females should be coming out real soon. See, and here we have a long line of kales. They've been doing all right, you know. The summer heat is when they start to slow down and not do the absolute best. They like it much better in the cooler temperatures, but if they make it through the summer, they should do really well in the fall. If not, I'll just have to plant a new round of kales for the fall. Really, really lovely varieties. A dazzling blue, a thousand head kale, oof. Honestly, y'all, they ain't looking too hot. They're looking a little busted. It ain't looking a little busted. The cabbage worm has been a real menace this year, too. Yeah, well, it's just fine. It's okay. We'll get through it. I'm actually gonna hop over. <gasps> Oops. I do also want to state that I was doing something really experimental in this bed as well. I planted beans and clover in this bed with the kale also to help fix nitrogen within the soil because, you know, Kales and brassicas are really heavy nitrogen feeders. Um, so, curious to see how that's playing out. I mean, everything's growing really well. Size-wise, like it keeps going. I mean, it is getting ravaged by that cabbage worm and the heat, but doing well nonetheless, still trucking along. Here's a really cool variety. This is a, um, I think a Giralo. Let me see the tag here. A jagalo, a jagalo narrow kale, which is supposed to be one of the most nutritious kales, but it is very slow growing. I literally planted these at the same time as these over here, the Russian red kales. But it's taking a sweet time. I'm gonna let you take your sweet time, honey, because I want you. I want you. I haven't even harvested much of it because I just wanted to be happy and establish. <laughs> Ooh, over here, I have some nasturtiums and a line of peppers as well that seem to be doing all right. I'm quite curious about this side of the garden, or at least this bed, because everything here is growing quite slowly compared to other things. Um, but not the zucchini. I mean, the zucchini is like really taking over the arch there. So I'm curious to see what, what's going on here. Here I have some Japanese long cucumbers that have started to take off and are flowering, but still feel like they're slow. 
I tried pollinating this cucumber, curious to see how that went. Grow for me, cucumbers, grow. Putting out a lot of flowers though. And over here is a sour gherkin variety of cucumber, but again, I feel like it's taking so long. I feel like once they take off, they should really be growing quite fast. So I find it quite interesting. And it has been raining the past few days, so I was really expecting more growth than this. But luckily enough, this zucchini is doing it for everybody. Look at how gorgeous it looks on the trellis. Ugh. Just stunning. So, so stunning. And the fruit are doing wonderful. Really filling in nicely. I should probably harvest these soon so it puts out even more. <gasps> Look at this one. What a beautiful fruit. Oh my god, it's so big. It doesn't even fit on the camera. <laughs> it's crazy. But one of my favorite things to grow always in the garden zucchini rampicante look at this one oh that's a little backlit so beautiful wow love it and i should probably harvest this one soon too because the older they get the woodier they get too and the milder the flavor becomes um but if they get really large like really large they get a flavor more similar to um butternut squash actually which is quite interesting Oh, this flower is not going to make it. Over here, I have a vining nasturtium that's doing really lovely. Oh my gosh, I love the flowers. Look at that. So pretty. So pretty. Oh gosh, and a long line of tomatoes. We got to get into the tomatoes, fam. But before that, I have a hardy kiwi that... It, it, it is its first year, so it hasn't really established just yet. Giving it its time to establish. I don't know, it's giving me mixed signals though. Part of it's doing well, part, other parts don't seem like they are. I don't know, I'm just letting it do its thing and hoping for the best. Next to it, I have this Japanese morning glory, the imperial Japanese morning glory that has finally taken off and it's starting to vine. And my vision that it's gonna fill, it's gonna fill this, this uh, arch with beautiful, beautiful bursts of purple pink and blue flowers i think it'll look so nice won't it chloe <laughs> you're so cute i love you oh my gosh and we have this long line of tomatoes here that are doing so well look at this oh i actually have to stake you up honey you are tipping over um this is actually a yellow pear variety of tomatoes and we're finally ooh, ooh, stepping on some onions finally getting some to ripen back here really nice i actually really like snacking on these they're really refreshing and tasty and then down here i have onions and carrots growing in a patch basil calendula some peppers as well just so oh i think I actually just hunk of this grass out of here we don't need you up in here bro um oh get that dirt off but here we have some green or cali wonder bell peppers that are doing well over here is a Castelluto Florentino variety of tomato. Oh, and they're ripening. Look at how beautiful. Such a gorgeous shape and cut. Oh my God, wait, this one's ready. Oh, it is so nice and firm, guys. I'm gonna harvest. I am gonna harvest. I'm gonna do that after this video because I would love some tomatoes tonight. Here is a pink bumble variety of tomatoes. Cherry type tomato and they look so cute. I love their stripe pattern such a beautiful variety and it is so prolific there's so much happening i feel like honestly i'm gonna attribute it to the tomato tickle if you guys don't know the flowers of tomatoes have both the male and female reproductive organ so if you tickle it it'll help pollinate the flower and produce fruit and it seems to be working out <laughs> Ooh, over here I have the um, brandy wine tomato, and th this is a really interesting tomato because the leaves on it are so different than the other tomatoes. They look so interesting. Such a unique leaf, but we're getting tons of fruit. Look at how big these are down here. They're just barely missing the floor. I, I hung it just so I wouldn't touch the floor. I wouldn't not want that, but they're getting nice and big. 
can't wait to see these start to ripen. Should be soon, should be soon. They're a much bigger variety, so I'm, I'm being patient with them. Let's see. I guess while we're on the topic of tomatoes, let's talk tomatoes. In this bed, I have even more tomatoes. This is like my salsa bed. So we have purple tomatillos in the front here, tons of them. Oh wait, is that a pansy? I had pansies in here last year and one just like sprouted up in here. How cute. I'm gonna let her be. They're cute flowers. And I actually think they're edible too. Um, this is purple tomatillo. Interesting. This one seems it's bursting out of its husk, but it's not purple. When are you gonna turn purple? I'm confused. But nonetheless, I need to harvest this, <laughs> this tomatillo. <gasps> oh my gosh guys this is this literally just happened today what <gasps> okay this is a pineapple tomato it is a gorgeous delicious tomato beautiful yellow orange tomato i love it but it started to ripen today you see how it's like deepening in color and y'all look at this one. Oh my god massive massive that's the biggest goddamn tomato i've ever grown in my life Oh my god, it is huge. My tomatoes are so happy. I am so proud of myself, fam. Oh. When I planted the tomatoes, I planted them really deep in the soil. Like, literally a foot of the stem went into the ground. Because they have little hairs on the side here called trichomes. And those hairs can actually turn into roots if they're planted in the soil. So that's what I did. And at the very base of the tomato, I also added some compost some organic fertilizer that was rich in calcium um, and potassium. And I also sprinkled some Epsom salt in there because that has a nice boost of magnesium and that beautiful little formula of everything has given me these gorgeous tomatoes. And pruning, effective pruning, lots of effective pruning. Like getting rid of like any suckers that I don't want to grow. Learn that last year the hard way. Um, I wonder if there's any I can show you. But just like any unnecessary growth that comes out of the armpits like this, like I don't want an arm, a whole new arm of tomato coming out. So I just like pick those off and it refocuses energy into fruit production and into the actual arms that I do want to grow. So that has really helped the tomatoes. Here I have a Black Beauty variety, really lives up to the name and it's so prolific. There's so many and it seems that these are starting to ripen as well. Oh, just beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. Very exciting. I believe, I'm not too sure that this is a Cherokee purple variety. I'm really not sure. I literally got the seeds from a, a fruit, a tomato at the market. It looked like the Cherokee purples I grew last year, so that's kind of just what I assumed they were. But these are starting to ripen and they're looking divine as well. Lots of fruit as well. Remember guys, the tomato Tickle, that is the secret. Tickle your tomatoes. And here is an Abe Lincoln tomato, another lovely heirloom variety. Look at how big that tomato is. Look how it just fills my hand. Oh my gosh, guys, I need to enter this in like a fair or something. This is crazy. This is, a, this is gonna be like a five pound tomato. Wild. And on the edges, got some purple basil, green basil, more calendula. Again, really playing on that diversity in the garden. We'd love to see it. Oh, y'all don't even get me started on this side. Y'all, you see this? You see that color? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You had no right coming up in here like that. This is my first year growing zinnias. And I have fallen in love. They have such a gorgeous color. Oh my goodness. They're so prolific. They have so many blooms and the blooms last so long. I feel like this has been in bloom for weeks now. Like it has not lost any flowers. I'm so shocked. Here's a beautiful pink variety as well. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. I love them. Love, 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 love them. I'm gonna grow them every year for the rest of my life from now on. Let's see. I also have sorrel growing in the center here. And borage, really excited about borage. Beautiful little edible flowers. They taste like cucumber. I actually just like snack on them. Oh, so tasty. But such a beautiful, beautiful plant. 
Love the, the sprinkle of blue it adds in with all the warm hues of the other flowers. Here I have some lavender that I also started from seed that is just establishing, taking its sweet time this year, but I'm happy to see it's filling in nicely. Get it, lavender. I believe in you. I believe in you. Over here I have an interesting mix of things going on. I have broccoli that's bolted and I'm letting it bolt, but the flowers just are dying off. I honestly just gotta get rid of this broccoli. The cabbage worm really won this year with it. I think from now on, I'm just gonna plant brassicas like, well, not the cabbage, the cabbage was fabulous, but broccoli and cauliflower, I think I'm gonna plant in the late summer so that it grows through the fall because the cabbage worm is not active in the fall. So that should be nice. But I just let it bolt and was hoping for seeds, but that didn't really play out that well either. Um, sadly enough, but it's okay. Here I have some purple cauliflower that I'm trying something new here. Um, people, or I've heard plenty of times that people wrap their cauliflower heads like this to prevent them from bolting and to protect the flavor because the scorching sun can't affect the flavor of the cauliflower. But I think I might have done it far too late because this, this cauliflower seems to be bolting also. Jesus was not the year of broccoli or cauliflower for me, but that's fine. That is so okay. Love to learn. Over here we have lettuce that I've let allowed to bolt because I want to collect seeds as well because seed saving is so important. I feel like it's like the truest form of sustainability because if you collect the seeds, you have your produce for next year right there. Also have these lovely lines of onions that are doing really well. I love just being able to come in here and pluck them as I need. Um, I actually have so many. I haven't even gotten to this bed yet. But, oh my gosh, they are getting huge. Look at how big that bulb is there. Oh, get it, onion. Get it, onion. And I planted these as like little bulbs as opposed to the seeds. And they're doing really well. Very, very well. Over here is a green chard and carrot bed. The carrots have been doing so well. Oh, so proud of my carrots this year. So, so proud of my carrots this year. I was really on top of it with thinning. I direct sowed them all and I was sure to thin to give them ample room in between to grow well. And they're loving it. One of them has actually gone to flower. And I'm very excited to collect seeds from this. Fun fact, if you guys know the flower Queen Anne's Lace, um, that flower and carrots are in the same family. Don't they look similar? <laughs> The green chard's doing lovely. I also planted some onions from seed here, some yellow Spanish onions, and they seem to be growing in well. Nice. The green chard's doing lovely as well. Oh my goodness, y'all. Everything's popping. Look at that sunset. Look at that glow. Look at the sunflowers from here. Wow. A uh, moment. Love to see it. Just want to walk down this little promenade here. Because I love the way this just like leads you and gives you this gorgeous view of the garden here. Wow. Our hibiscus has started to flower. Oh my goodness. Such beautiful, beautiful big blooms. And remember how I mentioned okra and hibiscus are related? Look at their flowers. So beautiful. This lily has started to burst. Oh, Dominic loves his lilies, but he'll probably have to give you a perennial tour real soon because there is tons going on. Oop, oop, prickly, prickly, prickly. Whew, wow, everyone. I think, I think that's about all I have for you right now. Just wanted to give you a, a beautiful update of everything that's going on. The gardens are absolutely luscious. But I will be leaving you here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this tour, that it's brought you some peace, that it's inspired you, that it's informed you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or any tips. They're all greatly appreciated. I love talking with you guys. But until next time, take care. Sending you all so much love and so much light.